take a girl and a guy, and they fall madly in love and form a family. Sprinkle in some counseling degrees and a doctorate, a dream of transforming relationships as we know it. And 20 years later, we give you power couple Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. And this is their podcast, Couples Synergy. Welcome back to another episode of Couple Synergy with Dr. Ray and Jean. Hi, I'm Dr. Ray. And I'm Jean. And this is our podcast about love, marriage, and relationships. Be sure to check us out online on our Facebook page and Instagram at Couple Synergy or our website, couplesynergy.com. And please be sure to subscribe to our podcast or send us any suggestions on topics you'd like to hear more about. And now on to Couple Synergy, an in-depth look at love, marriage, and relationships where we bring you our experience helping thousands of couples transform their relationships for nearly 20 years. You know, everyone says you should work on your relationship, but nobody teaches us how. So we've created this podcast to teach people what they can do to create the relationship they've always dreamed of. With the partner they fell in love with. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about whether you guys out there should be scheduling sex or not. That is a very uh, typical thing for a typical marriage therapist to tell people. Right, it is. And we will go over what our thoughts are about that. Before we do that, I just wanted to I just wanted to talk a little bit about, about Jasmine, our dog. Yeah, this weekend, uh, as you know, we podcast from our home pub. Right. And I'm looking around at all the... Uh, Empty shelves <laughs> and no glassware because people have been coming over to say goodbye to her all week and her kids were in town and um, she had a, a really beautiful crossing. And she had a very wonderful long life. Yeah. She's 14 and a half years old and, um, you know, last couple of years have been really tough. Uh, just with her doggy dementia, and she crossed over on Friday. Yep, Good Friday. On Good Friday, yeah. yes. If you've heard our episode, which is number 72, I believe, it was in February 13th of 2019, and, you know, I personally talk about how much she helped me learn to bond and connect in a way that I don't think I ever had before. And now I think that has also helped me trust you more and helped our bond. And, you know, she was a therapy dog and she was so intuitive. Mm, Yeah. And, you know, Ray and I have separate offices and, you know, there, there could be a client crying in my office and she'd be in his office and she would get up and go to the door and come all the way to my office to comfort that person. And she was so... Wonderful. And I know a lot of you people that listen to our podcast have personally had that experience with her. And we just wanted to let you know that, um, you know, she got her wings and she. Well deserved. Well deserved. Well deserved wings. She was very much not the dog she used to be. She, Mm -hmm. She was really trapped in an old body by the time it was her time. And, you know, she's free. She's free now and on to do whatever she does from there. And it was beautiful. Uh, I know we don't sound as sad as we actually are, but Mm. um, she will be very missed. And for Ray and I, we started our relationship with our son, Alec, was in our lives when I met you. And then we've since had uh, another child and Angie joined our family. Alec and Angie are married. And three dogs, right? Docker and Libby and Jasmine. And now for the first time in our relationship, we are completely alone. First time in 24 years yeah. that we have not had a dog to take care of and to take care of us. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we, we mentioned Jazz just because, um, you know, she has been around since you know, to the start of the podcast and a lot of our video recordings. And so there are times you'll, you'll catch her, you know, making noise in the background or snoring, <laughs> right? Or, you know, she was just uh, an active part of all of this. So, yeah. you know, that's just kind of why we wanted to give a little personal shout out 
and to heaven to jazz here on the podcast. Our baby girl. Right. Yeah. Okay, on to something a little bit more. Well, I don't know what's what's more. Well, well, yeah, we're we'll, we're Different. definitely going to get into Different. this this topic because it's a it's a very big one, and you know a lot of people who have um, a lot of opinions about this this topic. Um, but I wanted to show, I, I just wanted to kind of showcase a review that we had um, on Apple Podcast. It's by someone they signed it X N F M L Y, and they said. Uh, title, Interesting Topics, Gene and Dr. Ray have an informative, light, and intimate interview style. The shows are easy to listen to and provide value. The topics are accessible and relatable. And I just want to thank you out there for you know putting the reviews. We read every single review. We take each review very seriously. And you know, you're right. I mean, we try to talk about accessible and relatable topics that people out there have questions about. And we've heard these questions over the years, right? And not come at it from a place of being some type of stuffy professional or like a textbook, but really from a place of being human beings, being right. partners ourselves. And of course, all the experience we've had over the last 20 years in working with couples. Mm -hmm. And so we really appreciate that kind of feedback. So if you're listening and you have feedback for us, it's really good to hear. It helps us continue to do this what we do knowing it has value for people which is awesome absolutely and you know if you do have topic suggestions you can email us at contact at couple synergy.com then we'll be able to take a look at the topic and, and maybe you'll hear it uh, on another podcast um, if you'd like to see a picture of our little jasmine you can go to our facebook page couple synergy with dr ray and jean and there's a nice little tribute to her there yes Yes, there is. So to this topic about whether you schedule sex. Yeah, that sounds sexy. <laughs> it sounds so boring. Oh, my gosh. But, you know, there are a do lot of couples. A, do you get a 10-minute reminder in your Google calendar? Oh, I, I hope not. <laughs> there are a lot of couples out there that are struggling with intimacy issues and maybe they've seen a marriage counselor or, you know, relationship coach. And many times the advice is to put sex on the calendar. Here's your appointment reminder to have sex with your wife in exactly 10 minutes. Right. <laughs> and, you know, I can see from the perspective of some of these professionals saying, if you are not making it a priority, if you are not carving out sacred time for intimacy, then it can degrade the relationship. And that absolutely is true. So I agree with scheduling sex and I disagree with scheduling sex and I agree with it and I disagree with it and I agree with it and I disagree with it. <laughs> and, you know, we, we have never done that. No. We have never scheduled. Uh, we are not very routine. Mm-hmm. And every time we've tried to find any type of real statistics about you know, how much sex are people really having, there is n not much out there. And I don't think people, even if they do report something, are probably not very honest about that. And so what's normal, what's not normal, I don't know. What we do know is that there are a lot of sexless marriages out there, and mm -hmm. that is defined as less than 10 times a year. Is that correct? Yeah, it's pretty much like less than once a month. Yeah, and there are many, many couples in that category, sadly, that we have come across. And then there's also issues of people using it as withholding if they're angry at their partner or... Um, Some power struggles. Yeah. yeah. Or, you know, lots of other things like porn addiction and... Mm -hmm things that kind of get in the way of our intimacy. And, you know, here's, here's, I do agree with the fact that it should be a priority in your life and you should pay attention and you shouldn't allow so much distance to happen in your relationship that you're only, pardon the pun, that you should only 
come together. Oh my gosh. That's a month or so. That's funny. I was, I was waiting to see what you were going to say there. Yeah. It is a very complex issue. Intimacy between a couple is as unique as a fingerprint. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I don't feel that a blanket statement across the board for all couples is appropriate. You know, you might be dealing with a couple that, you know, they have some past trauma when it comes to intimacy. Mm -hmm. Or one person is using sex to uh, kind of drain the other person's energy. They're using it to get reinforcement for maybe their low self-esteem. Like they need validation. Yeah. Right. And so forcing the other person to have to show up and participate in that is not fair. Right. So that would be a reason we would disagree with it. Mm -hmm. But what I would say is you should try. And that's one way to bump into it. And you've heard us talk about this, that we, we develop over time. When a couple first comes together, there is, it's so much more physical. And uh, it's a lot easier it, in the beginning. Because of the uh, hormones right. and all the way our body works. And then it moves into something else throughout that relationship. So, it, and it depends how old you are and where you are in the relationship and where you are in the developmental stages of having a family or not, mm -hmm. all impacts that stuff. There, once it starts moving into this, the emotional developmental stages, then that's where a lot of these wounds around intimacy can come to the surface. And it is now the challenge of the couple to heal that together. Unfortunately, there, there is very little direction out there mm -hmm. about how to do that. Right. And so couples tend to keep it to themselves. They don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. And then that distance grows. The wounds get bigger. And now they're adding wounds to the old wounds. And it just becomes something that's just too hard, right? Right. It's too difficult to even mm -hmm. approach. Yeah. And, and then it's hard to yeah. talk about. It's hard to talk about those things. It's hard to even... You know, and we're not going to do this any sort of justice in the next 30 minutes. Right. You know, we actually developed the weekend pretty specifically to work on that reconnection, um, even if it doesn't lead to physical intimacy, but just finding that closeness again. That's the weekend intensive mm -hmm. that, that we run twice a year. If you are listening to this podcast for the first time, right? Um, but yes, we, we do run these intense, intensive weekends for couples so that they can really take a look at their, their dance together, their emotional dance, their intimate dance and, and to improve. Yeah. And the last time to sign up for our most recent weekend is April, April 15th through the 18th is the weekend, but we really need everyone registered by April 7th. Right. So, so we can get all the food prepared and everything. Um, and it's really designed to be a very luxurious, wonderful atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So if you're, you, it's really a couple days from now, right? When this airs, this airs tomorrow and then it's really to like Wednesday. So if, if you're hearing this and it speaks to you, jump on there and join us on the weekend. But, you know, this complexity mm -hmm. that intimacy is because it isn't about what happens you know 30 minutes just the physical 10 act. minutes before you fall asleep at night or yep. wake up in the morning um it's a longer process because it's connecting at different levels so i we were talking about this the other night because we had a you know a fire in the fire pit mm -hmm. and you know i had that thought that when you're building a fire it takes a lot of time to get to the point where the coals are really hot and it will burn anything you put in there, right? Which but would be the female part of this. The, the female. Warmed up and really hot and, oh, you know what I mean? Yes. Mm -hmm. She would be quite turned on. Yes. <laughs> so, so, you know, when you're building a fire, you have to use 
kindling. You have to use twigs, sticks, and then you have to use wood pieces, right? And when you're starting that fire, it, it is something that has to, it, it, you have to care for it. It's feeding. Right. And there's mm-hmm. so much preparation that happens before you even strike a match. Right. I remember our neighbor, he used to make a fire and he used to take a solo cup and fill it up with it was gasoline. Gasoline. Yeah. And drop it in there. And you know, that makes a big whoosh, but it actually doesn't make heat. It, it burns up the small stuff really quick and leaves right. it uh, a cold, uh, empty fire. It really can't catch after that. It's it's too much. Right. And sometimes that's how men come at women. <laughs> I keep using that word and it sounds so funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're talking about sex. Right. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying very hard not to make any innuendos <laughs> inadvertently. So, yes. You know, if you use like an accelerant or something like that on a fire, it just burns off the accelerant very quickly mm-hmm. and you don't have a long lasting fire. And this is what I hear a lot from women that they feel that burned out tidness. They feel like before they're they're ever capable of settling their brains down enough to stop thinking about kids and dishes and work and whatever which is female brain, blah, 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 you know, all over the place to really settle into, oh, I can be present and I can mm-hmm. let everything go. And, and you know, it's a really common thing because of the how the female brain works versus the male brain. Masculine, feminine, I should say, because male brains can be more feminized or women, female brains can be more masculinized. Um, but it's over time it's very draining and this is where we're talking about scheduled sex again because the longer you don't have that type of connection to your partner the less hormones you have that make you want to have it also Mm. like I don't know if you've ever gone on a diet and in the beginning it's really painful to change your eating habits but then you start to resonate to that and it you know, becomes what you're used to. So if, you know, people do like that intermittent fasting where they only eat once a day and their body will get used to that and be like, okay, I only eat once a day. And we can change like that sexually. And if you keep avoiding, keep avoiding, keep avoiding, you stop feeling much energy towards that. Yeah, I was going to say when when you were talking about, you know, the men or masculine and feminine brain, for men typically... We're able to compartmentalize a lot more because we only use one hemisphere of the brain at a time. And so it's very easy for, for a man when he's stressed out to utilize sex in a way of a release versus a manifestation of connection, you know, with his partner. And so in those cases, if you are scheduling sex, you have no idea what mind frame you're going to be in when that day comes. I mean, what if you had a really bad day at work right? and you're really stressed out? Mm-hmm. So now sex becomes more service sex really at that point. Yeah. And if you're the receiver of that stress, that's another part of that burnout. Right. And it doesn't really increase intimacy and connection it just keeps it at that really functional service type of place that is not sustainable over time, I promise you. And so, you know, I'm going to go back to a pro of scheduling sex is that, and, and I would say scheduling intimate times, even if it isn't ending up in, in intercourse. Right. So if you have it scheduled, then maybe you would prepare yourself. And so if you know your brain has so much on its mind, maybe you go meditate and go take a bath and prepare yourself and get yourself in a framework where you can be more receptive to connection with your partner. And that's what we're talking about, the complexity of it. Mm. Like you can't just go, 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 time. Right, right. <laughs> it's not, that's not no, going to work. It, it takes time to really get you know, get yourself ready to connect. I mean, you think about, you know, when you're dating and you had a date coming up, 
you would really think about it. You would think about what you're going to wear. You would think about where you're going, right? And you would get yourself in that mind frame, you know, and emotional frame to to show up fully. Mm-hmm. Yep. And so I, I guess, you know, what you're saying is in the pro for scheduling sex is that you can get yourself ready for it. Mm-hmm. You can, you know, get excited. Maybe you can tie it in with a date night, you know, where you and your partner are going out someplace and it's going to be fun and and really kind of end the week off in, in a great way. But if you're not doing the preparation, then it doesn't matter. No, you'll just get in a big fight. Or you'll just walk away with yeah. a lot of resentment. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the thing is, your partner has no idea. And they have no idea because you probably have no idea. Or if you do have an idea, you don't want to say it out loud. You don't want to reject someone. You don't want to. And, and that's a big thing, right? And we talk about that. You know, the number one thing for men is the pain of being rejected. Mm-hmm. And so if if you're partner initiates and you reject them that's really painful yes and especially if they don't know why and there's no there's no response to that bid of hey i want to connect with you well that goes back to what we were saying earlier is that most couples don't talk about Mm -hmm. sex they don't talk about intimacy they don't talk about what works for them and Mm -hmm. what doesn't work for them And they keep that to themselves. And so when that rejection occurs, you just think it's about you. There's something that my partner doesn't like about me. Yeah. I I remember a time, you know, with us, for women who've had babies, hormonally, you go through so much. And there's sort of this emptiness that happens with your partner because a lot of that energy is now channeled to your baby, taking care of your baby. And, And it's hard. It's the same body parts. It's really confusing. It's really t- tricky, you know. And and then when there's not th- the nurture of the relationship and the nurture of time together, mm. and your partner might be like, well, what do you need? And we try to use like this logical brain, which doesn't work, but we try. I remember going through that and be like, well, what if we spent more time together? Or what if you talked to me more? Or what if you this? Or what if you that? Yeah. And it was never about that. It was it was about wanting to feel that from you, which is a really tricky thing to even try to convey or even know that that's what you want. Like, well, you can't just go through the motions right. and check mm-hmm. off the list. You know, she said she wants this and this, and she wants some flowers here, and it it, it doesn't work. It doesn't. No, because the intention isn't there. It's very functional and servicey. Exactly. In either direction. And so it's, it is really something that is much more emotional. And so if we're going back to the pro part about scheduled sex, then we're talking about creating a space where we're now tending to it. And that means what I would recommend is that you say, okay, we're going to carve out a chunk of time and we are going to at least start to be with each other, touch each other, talk to each other and have just couple time. And then because you're going to be present, you're going to be more aware. Hopefully you can slow the process down and talk about if you don't feel connected, why? What are you feeling? And sometimes just listening to your partner's heartbeat or feeling their skin can start to activate maybe some of the reasons why. Maybe you're full of resentment. Maybe you're not happy about changes that are happening. Maybe there is no time together and you're not feeling it. But it's it's that time then that you would say, okay, we're going to tend to it. We're going to talk about, you know, what are you feeling? What am I feeling? What's going on here? Right? Yeah. You had brought up the concept of hot and cold. Mm, yeah, the game. Right. Like you hide something and someone goes, oh, you're, oh, you're getting warmer. warmer. Right. Yep, uh-huh. And, oh, colder. Yeah, and this <laughs> this is something that couples could practice yeah. together, when, especially when they are trying to dial things back and really take a look at their intimacy and trying to look at where they can improve, where they can improve that connection. Because 
you know, sexual intimacy is the highest spiritual connection you can have with another human being. Mm-hmm. And if it's just functional sex over and over and over again, it can become the lowest form. Yeah. And yeah. draining. And you feel used mm-hmm. and you don't feel like connecting with this person. Mm-mm. So when you use, you can use the game hot and cold when you are trying to figure out each other, when you're trying to, you know, and it, and it doesn't matter if you're beginning your relationship or you have been together for a very long time. And now you're taking a look at your intimacy from a very different perspective. But this is where you would say, you know, you're getting warmer. This is making me feel closer to you. This is making me feel like connecting with you more. Or this, this just is doused not. a gallon of water on it. Yeah, <laughs> right, right, and you know, and then just really, you're slowing down the moments, and you're making sure that each moment and each action that you're taking is connecting and not disconnecting. And it's really tricky because you can't convey to your partner, "This is who I am, and this is what I need," all the time. Mm. You can convey this is what I need right now, but it might be really different the next time. And I, I think about, you know. How about every Thursday night at 8 p.m.? <laughs> <laughs> but there's times when, you know, I, I, I want to feel close to you, but I'm really not fully invested in getting everything out of it, so to speak. Mm-hmm. But then there's other times, and, you know, I kind of relate it to, um, when you go get a massage, right, they turn the lights low and they put on music. And when you first begin getting a massage, your brain's kind of, you know, all over the place and you're trying to settle down because you just probably were running a few minutes late and sliding into the parking space and running in and, and you need that little decompression. And then when the massage therapist start, starts touching you and activates that chemistry that helps you begin to relax that is all of that creates an environment and experience and if your brain is too overwhelmed on a certain day like i'm saying that's not you're not gonna need that every single time it's different right but sometimes that can go a long way to set a little bit of atmosphere and to add a lot more affection rather than just well, what you're doing is you are putting your partner then top of mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you are thinking about them and you are connecting those feelings of love and compassion and, you know, excitement for them. And if you continue to stoke that fire, the fire will grow and will get to a point that is warm enough to sustain heat. Yeah. And and I find that we kind of will take some turns being that person for each other, right? Sometimes I'm more in a place where I'm just giving to you and I just want you to receive and um and then other times where I just want to receive and I I find that works nicer than like I don't know, both trying to give at the same time or both trying to take at the same time. And then there's other times it doesn't matter. <laughs> And it and it's great and, and everything's going well and so you know those are probably vacation times when we're not thinking about work and family and all that other stuff and we're just you know really doing some good nurture for ourselves. And then you get plenty of energy. That's great. Well, you think about couples out there who have been disconnected for a very long time, and as we evolve over time, we're going to become different people, mm-hmm. right? And if a couple isn't doing that consistent connecting with each other, then they start to become strangers to each other. Right. And so if they are starting now to reinitiate, you know, sexual intimacy and that connection, it is going to be awkward. Yeah. And and not feel very safe. No. And, and you have to provide a very safe environment mm-hmm. in order to nurture this. Mm-hmm. So if you think just putting it on the calendar is going to be good enough because it's going to make it happen, it absolutely is not. In fact, it actually could cause more of a problem. Right. It could um, work 
surfacey initially. And then it's going to create a debt, like using a credit card. Like, I don't have the energy or space for this right now, but I have to pay right now, so I'm going to do it. But now I have this debt. Now I'm getting more resentful. I'm getting drained or I, I'm feeling, you know, I have to disconnect in order to connect. Right. Which is not, that's not what we teach. That's not what we want for people. No. And and we don't kind of teach something that is a blanket no. type of rule for mm-hmm. everyone because every couple is very different. Yeah. And you really have to consider all of the circumstances in your relationship and those that surround your sexual intimacy before you can really start to see what is going to be good and what's going to work for you. Mm-hmm. So, it, I mean, it's kind of like a diet, you know, some diets are going to work for people and some are not going to work for people depending on their body type and their health and, and everything. And so it, it's really a, a very one-on-one thing, right? Or a couple, specific couple thing mm-hmm. that, that couples really need to look at and, and, and get the right guidance too. Right. That's an interesting point. And you know, maybe if if you had to give out a prescription to improve your sex life, uh, maybe that prescription should be um, time together doing difficult things that are physical. Because when you do exercise, like hiking um, and working out, you're increasing your testosterone, which is going to increase your sex drive. And if you're doing that with your partner, you're increasing that together and you'll probably have more energy in that part of your life a little bit more organically than just keep your life as it is and then try to schedule every Thursday. But it, that's that takes time. It takes time. Well, mm-hmm. I was going to say at very least, have a conversation with each other. Yeah, for sure. Well... <laughs> Like n- <laughs> right. number one, number yeah, one, for sure. communication, communication, you know, just talk about what, what you're happy with, what you're not happy with. And this is why, you know, we did design the weekend because sometimes you need a way to talk about it. You need someone else to, to help you start to consider the things of why it might not be working that you haven't even thought about. And, and do it in a way that's not going to start a fight. Yeah. And someone's going to take hurtful, it personally. Right. 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 Mm-hmm. It's because it's not about accusation. No. It's not about judgment. It's really about the two of you going back to the drawing board, taking a look at your relationship and where you want to improve it. And specifically in this area of sexual intimacy, mm-hmm. because no one's got it down. Just so you know, a little secret here. Nobody's got it down. Right. And we all have to work on our relationships. Yeah, when we start working with a couple, we'll ask them, you know, how often are you intimate? And then we ask them, how did you decide that? And they always have this blank look on their face, like, decide that? We didn't decide anything. It just happened. (laughs) And that's the problem, right? It was a decision. It just wasn't a very conscious one. And whatever was the thing that shut you down, your partner has no idea. You may not have any idea. And whatever shut your partner down, they don't know either. And that is the point of, of doing this kind of work, of doing the couple to couple work, of really going like, yeah, what was happening for me? And what was happening for you? And where did this, because I promise you, it is not about, do they know how to put things together? Do they know how to touch you in a certain way? It's not about that. <laughs> I was like, it's not, what are you talking about? Yeah, it's like the logistical, physical oh, thing. Yeah. It's not about no, that. It's, not about, it's that. about something else that happens way long before that in your connection that no one means to do mostly. And, and then it happens. And they don't even know why over time it's eroded. I guess you could go back to the yellow flag episode and start to see where we talk about the things that erode relationship. But um, it is a tricky thing to kind of figure out. Right. And it's... um. It's a little scary to go there. Scary to go there as a person and it's scary to go there with your partner. Well, it's stuff that people don't talk about. Mm -hmm. They keep it behind closed doors and even in the relationship as we're talking about, they don't even talk about it there. Right. But one thing's for sure is that it's not going to get any better. Mm -mm. 
So the only way that it is going to get better is to start to explore it and to really start talking about all of what's going on. So if we were to wrap this up, I would say we do not agree with scheduled sex. It can be damaging in terms of making people feel shame or forcing them to do things that they don't want to be doing that might be bringing up a trauma for them Mm -hmm. or it might be forcing them to do something to have a connection that they're not feeling and not addressing that piece. Especially in those cases where the relationship is not emotionally safe. Right. And we definitely don't agree with scheduled sex being a blanket statement across the board for all couples. Right. You know, if, if you're struggling with this topic, you're not alone. There's most couples go through this at some point in their relationship. If not all, maybe all. And if someone is telling you, you have to schedule sex, then you know for sure you shouldn't be scheduling sex because you have a bigger problem. Well, that sounds more like an ultimatum. Yeah. And so it's an issue and, and it's a, it, it really is just a icing over of an issue that's a really, it's speaking volumes that really should be listened to and unraveled and handled very gently and carefully. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you so much for joining us today on Couple Synergy. Our passion is in helping couples and people have happy and healthy relationships. And this podcast gives us a fun way of bringing our knowledge and expertise to you, our listeners. For all of you listening, please subscribe to our podcast and please leave us a review. If you have any questions, comments, or topic suggestions, again, please email us at contact at couplesynergy.com. For more information about Couple Synergy and our programs such as Relationship 101, the Couples Weekend Intensive, our online community called Connections, and our premier program called Couple to Couple, look us up online at couplesynergy.com. And if you know someone who could benefit from this episode, please download it and share it. And thank you for listening. Until next time, synergize your life and synergize your love. You have been listening to Couple Synergy with Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. Couple Synergy was recorded, edited, and produced by Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. Voiceover and music entitled Breathe and Let Go was recorded and composed by Gina Gonzalez.